Okay, um, I'm just going to give everyone, I think I only have 10 minutes, a sort of brief update on our archaeological standard method of measure measurement project. Um, just to do a sort of review, uh, some of you may have seen a presentation about two years ago from Mike Heaton on this project. Um, the project is to create um, both an archaeological bill of quantities template and an archaeological cost of information service. Um, for those, I'm pretty sure we're all familiar, but for those not, a uh, bill of quantities is a slightly different way of billing. So instead of billing by, say, a fixed amount, um, you bill by items, quantities. Uh, you bill by the number of trenches. You bill, uh, bill by the number of post holes you, you dig. Um, so what we're doing is creating a framework to allow archaeologists to do that. Um, a cost information service, um, there is the one done by Rix, which is now spun out into its own company, but essentially it's gathering together all a range of sort of costs on those different items. So uh, people could look up and say, oh, this bag of nails costs, you know, 39p, um, this... Uh, stainless steel doorknob costs this much versus one that is maybe brass. And it's used by QSs to essentially be able to price out their projects ahead of time and to be able to work with their clients and say, if you make this change, this is how much it's going to cost. Um, so there's two parts to this project. I'm going to talk about the first part that somewhat failed, uh, just to catch up. Um, so the idea was we were going to uh, retrofit sort of a cost information service that is go look back at different archaeological projects and see what we could uh, find and how we could price that and build essentially a cost information service for archaeology. Um, we ran into a couple of problems with that. Um, one is just the sample size. So um, the cost information service, the business cost information service, the one used to be run by Big. Uh, Rick's now its own service. Uh, it has you know 20,000 items, um, and I'm not joking when I say there's a whole list of how many you know different doorknobs and how much they cost. Um, it is incredibly detailed, um, and uh, it's all from construction projects. And archaeology just does not happen on that scale, so it's really hard to sample for that. Um, you know, there's probably about a hundred times as many uh, construction projects that just don't get any archaeological planning. If you're talking sort of excavation, it's probably about a thousand times as much. So they have a large sample to take from. We didn't. Um, another issue is uh, data in archaeological reports. The archaeological reports, um, they're not bill of quantities. Uh, so it's actually really, really hard to pull out that information from archaeological reports. And then, of course, if you're not billing and putting together things um, as a BQ, um, it's really hard to actually be able to align those with the prices. So essentially, the idea of doing a retrofitted cost information service we found is not going to be possible at this point. Uh, going forward, we might be able to use real live data to build it, um, but the idea of us basically going through a bunch of old reports and pulling this together is not viable. So that's the first part of the project. Um, the second part of the project is the Bill of Quantities um, template. Uh, and right now, sort of the, the biggest thing we've sort of run into as we're, we're getting feedback from both QSs and archaeologists, um, and there's causing a little bit of friction. Obviously, there's different terminologies, uh, different ways of thinking, um, different wants and needs. Um, so, yes, a QS, um, if you, I were to offer you a spreadsheet with 20,000 different variations, they would ask the, me to marry them. Um, they would love that. That's exactly what you need uh, with your client. You need to be able to quickly look up any price and be able to say, um, yeah, this is the change. If you make this change to your project, this is how much it's going to cost. Really easy. It's easier to keep track of, of costs. Um, of course, as an archaeologist um, or pretty much anyone else, you're not very interested in giving a list of every possible variation of every possible uh, way of doing archaeology. It's super time consuming. So that was an issue. Um, and of course, another issue is archaeology 
especially in excavation, deals with a lot of uncertainty. Uh, whereas normally a QS deals with a lot of certainty. Um, so except for sort of excavations for the most part, almost the entire project is already uh, costed out. It's already itemized well before uh, a shovel goes into the ground. Uh, so they're quite, quite set on prices. Uh, whereas archeology, span we can come back and say, oh, well, we found a bunch of things we didn't know was going to be there. Um, and of course, archeology span also has a, a slightly different problem from a lot of other professions. Um, and that, you know, there's a lot of different factors that go into sort of costs, uh, just throwing a few up there, you know, soil characteristics can slow down work, you know, water log, pumping out water. Um, I, I was loving a couple of months ago, was it National Trust put out those pictures of how they've saved all their tree roots on all their thing, but um, I just, you know, that's a lot of work. Um, you're digging all around every tree roof, root and supporting them. So there's different things like that that's going to increase your costs. Um, and then, of course, we have all of humanity that we excavate. Um, so we have a lot of different features. Um, and that causes a lot of problems. Um, and so this number right here uh, is not even close to the number of different variations we were looking at um, that you could do with a cost information service. That number right there um, happens to be just the limit of how many rows you could put in an Excel sheet. Um, we, we did some quick calculations and it was like 4 million variations we could do, um, which obviously no one wants to spend, uh, I believe I calculated at 122 days straight. No, sorry, 1,022 days straight of if you could just enter in one line per second is how long it would take you. Um, that is not doable. Um, so what we're building on right now is a sort of condensed um, template and we're looking at different conditions. So in a sense, it's gonna be more mathematical. You know, you put in the cost of what you estimate that condition is. Um, you can then line those up later and you don't actually need to enter in um, as many uh, bill of quantities are every single line of every combination. Um, you can just go back and calculate that out. So that's where we're at. Um, that is going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks and hopefully you guys will be able to do it. Um, one other thing I should also say is, um, you know, lots of different thoughts about what will happen and how this will be used. Um, one thing to say is it's incredibly flexible. You could, if you wanted to, do your entire project, and uh, I apologize, this is just roughly um, a, a sort of put together uh, possible different steps. Obviously different projects have different uh, setups, um, but you could do everything as a bill of quantities if you absolutely wanted to. Or you could break it up and do different sections as bill of quantities. Um, you could essentially, you know, the developer could come to you and say you have five grand to do public engagement, and that's what you have. And it could be fixed costs, different things. Um, I want to get across the point is we're making a tool. Uh, it's a fame-based tool, and so that means we're not going to say you must do it this way. It's please use it to your advantage. So in some ways, um, it may be useful in some areas. We've estimated and sort of put in the guidance and advice is that, you know, for smaller projects, you don't need a BQ. Uh, maybe for larger projects, you don't need a BQ. There's a lot of different factors that go into it. Um, use it so it best supports you. Um, I should also just say, um, this is the, only the first steps. The original standard method of measurement, the original um, bill of quantities put together by construction was actually originally started in 1915. The current sorry, UK-wide one uh, was 1922. So they've had 100 years on us. Um, we're gonna be creating a digital document so it can be updated. Um, and we expect it to actually be updated as people start to use it um, and revise. So this isn't sort of us putting out a final version. Um, I mean, Rick's updates there's by major updates about every decade with minor ones every couple of years. Um, initially, we're thinking with the digital one, we'll probably be updating it quite a bit in the future um, as people use it, practice, see what works, see what doesn't. Um, so this is very much a work in progress. Um, and so the first draft will be out in a little while for everyone to be able to see and test and hopefully feedback if it's something useful. And that is pretty much it for my presentation.